What is it like being a new dad? No, I, I, I opened her up to change her and, and she started peeing all over the place and now there's pee all over the place and I don't know, I don't know how this baby pees this much. I know I have to wipe from the top down. I, I know you don't wipe from the back up. I know, top down, I know. She's probably hungry. She's probably tired. She may need to be changed. I guess I just don't realize why we have to boil these things. I mean, the kid eats her foot and poops on herself. Nothing. I didn't say anything. I I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, there's just poop everywhere. I, I opened up the diaper and, and there's just there's just poop everywhere. The baby's sleeping. The baby's up. It's amazing. I'm like anything else. I don't know. Like there there's no. I I don't know how much. I don't know how that much poop can come from such a small thing. She's probably hungry. She's probably tired. She probably needs to be changed. We usually sleep when the baby's sleeping. It, there's, it's just everywhere. I don't know, and, and it smells and it stinks. Is this is this thing backwards? Oh, I just opened up the diaper, I, I, and they're just, they're just everywhere. I think I even have it on my hand. Can't describe it really. What was the birthing process like? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. The miracle of birth. It, it was. It was a miracle. Yeah. How are babies born? Well, when a man loves a woman, um, they come together and... Hey everybody, Nick Licamelli here, back on Technique Peak. Today we have a very special guest. My daughter, Ava, is here to help us with exercise considerations for the postpartum woman. <laughs> She's looking at me. Exercise considerations for the postpartum woman. I'm going to keep that in. <laughs> Exercise considerations for the postpartum woman. Now, we did a video previously on exercise considerations for a pregnant woman. And my wife, Carly, was used to demonstrate some exercises. Obviously, she's not pregnant anymore. So, um, we're going to talk about exercise considerations for the postpartum woman. Um, also, very important. Um, just like they are for a pregnant woman. Um, so we'll talk about some things to consider, some precautions, and, um, and we'll go from there. So we're going to start with a bit of a PowerPoint presentation with a voiceover, just like we did last time, and then we're going to get right into um, some live, uh, live demonstrations, all right? So uh, let's get into it. All right, so postpartum exercise considerations. That is a picture of my wife, Carly, who we know from the uh, pregnancy video. Um, that moment right there was captured just moments after giving birth to our daughter. And it really uh, speaks volumes, I think. Uh, but the, uh, that moment was significant and special. But what unfolds in the weeks and months after that moment are also important, and that's what this presentation uh, will, will focus on. So first we want to understand what kind of birth we're talking about here. So is it a C-section or is it a vaginal delivery? Some considerations for a C-section, obviously it is a major sur uh, uh, surgery, and we're talking four to eight uh, weeks plus. Um, to recover from this. All of these types of um, activities that even we may not even consider activities, right? Coughing or laughing or bracing um, kind of just happen with normal everyday life. Obviously, we're going to have weakness, right? We just cut through the abdominal wall. Um, so we're going to have some, some weakness there uh, post-surgically. And obviously, difficulty with childcare. You know, this isn't exactly a, a you know a surgery on, on on someone's knee, where after the surgery they can lay in bed, put some ice on it, focus on recovery. Um, the birthing process is almost like the easy part, um, and the you know the real work comes afterwards when you raise the child and 
and uh, you know it's a lot of time, effort, very physically, emotionally demanding. Um, so don't forget that once the woman undergoes this surgery, um, she has a baby to look after, uh, both physically and mentally. So we want to exercise early and often, right? Should be no surprise there if we are physical therapists who are listening to this. Um, we want to practice coughing, right? So um, gradually expose the body to that cough, um, ease into it. Um, this way we are more resilient when that cough comes on full speed. Um, saying the word hut, 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 right? In the research that's kind of been shown to uh, mimic a bit of an abdominal brace when you say that. So you can implement that in any kind of exercise. So, And we're going to get into this um, after with, with the live video session, but the uh, you can implement the hut, hut, hut sound during pretty much any kind of exercise, whether it be a simple low-level abdominal bracing exercise on the table or anything to a functional squat. Um, you can implement those uh, those sounds. Obviously, isometric abdominal bracing with deep breathing, right? Deep breathing is very, very important when it comes to, um, you know, controlling that, ab that abdomen, especially post-surgically. Pelvic clocks, uh, many of us know this exercise. Um, you kind of imagine the, the pelvis being a, the face of a clock, and um, you kind of tip down to, the, to different numbers, right? So uh, three, you know, six, nine, twelve, and um, basically just kind of getting control and starting some movement of that pelvis and those, uh, and those uh, abdominal muscles. And diaphragmatic breathing, like we said, um, always, always very, very important, uh, especially after having the uh, C-section. So vaginal birth considerations. We want to find out what kind of tear, uh, if any, that the mother experienced. So give the doctor a call. Um, this is all going to really impact our treatment moving forward. So the tears are graded one through four. Um, a grade three and four involves the anal canal, and one and two um, do not. Um, cranial swelling, soreness, and pain, um, what we can do for that, we can elevate the hips with pillows or bolsters, apply cool compresses, right, so they have ice packs especially made for that area, and of course pelvic floor exercises, which we will get into a bit later. Uh, bleeding and discharge, so typically the, the bleeding and discharge are start bright red, and then as you get further and further away from, uh, from the birth, it becomes light pink and then eventually a yellowish white. Um, we want to make sure that if your patient tells you that the color changed back to a previous color that it was, um, we want to contact the doctor, right? So if it's persistent uh, or and it, and it kind of regresses back to, to a color that it was, we want to contact the doctor. So overall, um, recovery time can vary significantly like any other surgery or trauma. The human body is, is uh, very individualistic and um, recovery time can vary significantly. Uh, we're going to have uh, see mood swings, possible depression, uh, fatigue, incontinence, right? All these things typically come uh, postpartum and relaxing hormones effects can last up to even six weeks. So all, all important to, to consider here. We're not cars, right? We're not, uh, if the brakes squeak and you replace the brake pads, your brakes will probably be okay moving forward. Um, humans are not like that, right? This is a uh, mind, body, everything is involved. So um, don't forget to, to be aware of these type of things. Okay, so exercise. Um, many, and I would argue all, postpartum women can benefit from physical therapy. So we want to encourage new mothers to request physical therapy because sometimes their doctors won't really know that physical therapy can help or won't really know how they can help. Um, so I think it's on us to educate uh, new mothers as well as educate some doctors that deal with these kind of patients and, and explain and show the, um, the positive impact we can have on, on the lives of these patients. And always, always, always speak with the referring physician, right? This isn't, uh, you know, a runner with knee pain. Um, this isn't someone who develops some low back pain. This is a human who pushed another human 
out of her vagina potentially. So we always want to uh, talk to the referring physician, um, you know, in this, this type of situation. So just some warning signs here with exercise should be no surprise to anyone. A fever above 100.2 for 24 hours or more. Any dizziness, nausea, extreme shortness of breath, um, you know, excessive breast tenderness, loss of bowel and bladder control upon exertion after four to six weeks, um, or you know, painful urination, uh, C-section uh, incision if it opens up or becomes painful, red, warm, tender, right? Any signs of infection at all, these are warning signs and you probably want to contact the doctor. So some considerations for women who are breastfeeding. Nursing mothers actually require uh, an, uh, roughly an additional 500 calories a day. And um, the pregnant uh, woman was re really only requires extra an extra 300. So um, it's a pretty significant amount of, um, you know, of energy demand on the body. So about an extra 500 calories. And keep in mind, if the woman is exercising, um, it's even more, right? Because we're exerting more energy. So proper nutrition um, is very, very important with, with, with women who are breastfeeding. And research kind of shows that exercise has no negative effect on milk production or infant growth. Um, sometimes that is a misconception. And you want to encourage these mothers to wear a supportive bra. Um, that will kind of help with any kind of tenderness or pain during exercise. All right, so with any exercise, the two most important things are adherence and specificity, right? So we want to choose a form of exercise that the patient enjoys. Um, so we don't want to force someone to go to the gym if they hate going to the gym. We don't want to encourage someone to do yoga if they hate doing yoga. We want to see what that patient enjoys, what they like doing, and encourage them to do that because there are no special uh, modes of exercise. All that's important is that they do some sort of exercise and they're consistent and adherent with it. Um, and it's also not a bad idea to try to incorporate the baby into exercise. So we'll see some examples of that in the live video following this. Um, sometimes not so much an excuse, I think it's a legitimate excuse, why a woman may feel like she is unable to exercise um, because she has the baby, right? And she can't always get childcare or people to babysit or to go to the gym or to go to a yoga class or a Pilates class or something like that. Um, so, you know, what do we do with the baby? Well, I'm going to show you in the video after some ways to incorporate the baby into exercise. And, um, you know, and I think that's pretty cool. It's bonding time, it's exercise, everyone kind of feels good after it, and it makes for some, uh, you know, some good memories as well. As far as our specific goals, um, we don't just want to throw things at the patient and because we think that that's what they want to do, right? So not everyone wants to get strong. Not everyone, you know, uh, has the same goal. So we want to figure out what our patient's specific goals are. Do they want to lose weight? Um, you know, that, that baby weight, do they want to get stronger? Do they want to get back to running 5Ks and half marathons? Do they have a specific sport that they want to get back to? Are they a high-level soccer player? Um, you know, all these things are um, have to be asked in the subjective, and that will help us guide um, our exercise program. So as far as intensity, we want to start conservative conservatively. Um, an RPE, so rate of perceived exertion on a 1 to 10 scale, about a 3 or 4 is a decent place to start and then you can progress from there. So frequency tends to be the most important thing. So we want to exercise um, often and consistently uh, 5 to 6 times a week and if the patient is unable to tolerate that much, uh, that high of a frequency, then rather than cut back on the frequency, we want to decrease the intensity, the volume, or the duration of the sessions um, to accommodate the, that frequency. So some postpartum issues, the obviously the pelvic floor muscles are affected during childbirth. So we can have um, urine slip out during coughing, sneezing, lifting, laughing. If it persists after eight weeks, we want to consider a uh, referring that patient to a pelvic floor specialist, right? So some incontinence is to be expected right after the birth, but if it persists, that's one we want to kind of refer that patient to a specialist. All right, so diastasis recti, near, nearly all women experience this. Um, it used to be seen as 
um, you know, a complication uh, with, with pregnancy and birth, but it's almost now considered somewhat normal. And this is a distance of you know, more than two fingers width where the uh, linea alba kind of splits in the, down the, the middle of the abdominal muscles. Um, not necessarily associated with pain. Again, it's kind of par for the course here. If the patient is uh, experiencing this and, and it, it is in fact painful, we want to avoid uh, forceful flexion and abdominal bracing, right? We want that thing to heal up and um, kind of go at it gradually and we don't want to tax it all that much uh, too, too soon. Home ergonomics are very, very important. Like we mentioned before, this child, this baby, is going to need a lot of attention, a lot of physical work, a lot of mental work. Um, so what we can do is make sure that we have things set up at home in, uh, in the best possible way. So adjust changing tables, right? We want them to be about waist height. We want to store our supplies like diapers, wipes, within reach. You don't, you don't want to bring a screaming, crying baby who has a wet diaper or a poop-filled diaper and be scrambling around trying to find the diapers, holding something in one hand, something around your shoulder, putting the baby in, you know, in the other hand, trying to reach a diaper. Make sure everything is is neat and and right within reach. Uh, comfortable and supportive chairs are very very important for rocking and feeding, and the use of pillows is is such a big help. Holding that baby for a prolonged period of time is not as easy as it may sound. You will likely feel some burning, some fatigue, some tightness, uh, especially in the shoulder, upper trap even the elbow, right? So use pillows and the boppy. So boppy is basically like a, almost like a U-shaped pillow that you can kind of wrap around your waist and rest the baby on it. Uh, especially, especially for women who are breastfeeding. Proper positioning is a huge, huge part of the breastfeeding experience. So just by using some pillows or like something uh, like a boppy, like I said, can make a world of difference and um, obviously proper quote unquote proper lifting mechanics so there is some variation as far as what is proper like we don't have to bend with a perfectly straight back you know it's not like we're going to pop out our discs if our back tends to bend a little bit we're much more resilient than that however if um, the mother is in pain it can't hurt to teach some mechanics and and maybe change up their mechanics to kind of shift the load um, to different places. Other considerations, so stress, sleep deprivation. Both of these things have been shown to increase risk of injury. I guess the the best advice I can give is, is try not to stress because the baby will be two weeks only once in its life. The baby will be four weeks only once in its life. The baby will be four months, only once in its life. So try not to stress. Try to enjoy these moments. Make them happy moments. Understand that no one is perfect. There is no perfect parenting guidebook. Um, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to learn from them. You're going to make parenting your own. Um, so don't stress when things are a bit crazy. Try to enjoy the ride. And sleep deprivation, you know, that kind of comes with this whole process. That's where naps become very important and um, you know taking turns if you're if you have a significant other with you or, or parents or anyone who can help in the area. Meditation is a great you know a great way to kind of mitigate these type of things too. Nutrition very very important. Sometimes you get so caught up in the baby and and you you kind of neglect your own health. It's important to you know take care of yourself. Take time Make some good, you know, good food. Have a nice dinner. Have a nice breakfast. Don't um, don't forget about yourself. It's important to to always take care of yourself. Same along the same lines with hydration, right? You don't want to go the whole day and then realize that you haven't had a sip of water all day. Take care of yourself. Drink water. Eat properly. And like we were talking about before, enjoy the process and celebrate the little things because if uh, if you don't, they're gonna fly by. They're going to fly by, and uh, and we don't want that to happen. This stuff goes very, very quickly. Try to enjoy everything. Celebrate every small moment, every small little win, 
And um, of course, always ask for help, right? If if you have if you're blessed enough to have some people in the area who can help, don't be don't feel silly. Ask for help because ninety percent of the time they are literally waiting by their phone to get a phone call to come over and help with the baby. So um, yeah, don't don't be afraid to ask for help. So should new mothers exercise? Obviously, the answer is yes. Um, it increases strength and endurance, helps lose weight, bonding time with the baby. And like we'll see in the video coming up, if we use the baby during exercise, it can be a great time to bond. And it also empowers new moms, right? This process is, in my opinion, the most empowering thing a woman can do. Um, watching my wife go through this process was unbelievable. I have, I have such a deeper respect for her. Um, more, It's just unbelievable. And, and taking control of the, the pregnancy, the birthing process, and then taking control of the um, time after birth, I think is uh, extremely empowering. So we want to help these new moms become independent and, and, and realize that they have the power to, to do this, right? They can, they can do this, this, this whole uh, parenting thing. And, and I think exercise is a great way to show them that. All right, so here's some references. If you want to pause the video and take a look at these, uh, much of this information is from a great MedBridge course, which is listed above. All right, so here we go, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So we're going to start on the table here in a hook-lying position and just kind of work on some abdominal bracing. Um, we're going to cue Carly to pull up on her pelvic floor like she's holding in gas or urine. And then we're going to cue her to tighten up her midsection like she is trying to put on a tight belt or as if she's walking into a cold pool and the water is drifting up on her navel. With the pelvic floor contraction, there are a couple of different ways we can do it. Um, the two most popular are to give quick, 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 quick uh, contractions. And then the other one would be to slowly ramp up the contraction until you get to a maximal contraction. Hold that for about 10 seconds and then slowly relax it out. So the idea is that you are controlling the intensity of the contraction. So a metaphor that's often used is imagine going up uh, floors on an elevator. Um, so, you know, floor one, floor two, floor three, and with each floor you're just ever so slightly tightening up that pelvic floor a little bit more until you get to the top when it's a max contraction and then you're going to slowly come down um, do the same way you came up uh, floor by floor and um, once you have this down you can implement it in pretty much any position whether it be a squat a hip hinge um, so learning that in this easy hook lying position is really sets the foundation moving forward and you can also use those hut 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 um, uh, exercises like we talked about in the PowerPoint so to progress this, we can lift the legs up as she stabilizes her spine against the table. And then to progress from there, like we all know, we can have Carly straighten out her legs just like she's showing there. So that's increasing the lever arm and just making it a little bit more challenging. Up next we have the squat. So I have Carly using uh, an, a TRX strap um, just because the, the purpose of this particular squat that I'm demonstrating is not so much to build strength um, or you know squat strength. The idea is to um, control that the pelvic floor, control her abdominal muscles as she squats down. Um, and then in that squat position, she can perform those um, quick, 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 quick pelvic floor contractions, or as she's in that squat, she can do that um, slow ramp up of the pelvic floor, and then that slow relaxation of the pelvic floor, um, uh, as well as the, uh, the hut, hut, hut uh, uh, exercises. Um, same thing can be done with the lunge here. Um, same idea is that we're gonna hold that bottom position, and we can you know, perform any type of those pelvic floor exercises um, as she is in this position. And these are all very, very functional uh, movements that she's going, <clears throat> excuse me, going to be doing uh, throughout her day, especially caring for the child. 
Up next is one of my favorites. It's a, just a simple weighted lift from the ground and placing the load onto a table. So this mimics lifting up a child and placing him or her on a changing table, for example. And once again, we're cueing that pelvic floor contraction as she's going through the movement here. What's also great about this exercise is that it's, a, it's an opportunity for education, right? We're going to educate Carly on the proper way to lift up the baby and transfer the baby uh, on different surfaces, especially those late nights when, you know, we're, you're half asleep and you kind of just want to pick the baby up and do some awkward twisting motion or something like that to, to kind of transfer the baby. Um, this is a good way to educate on, on the proper way to, to do this. So she has some strategies. And of course, a video from me would not be complete without some sort of squatting movement and some sort of hip hinging movement. So of course, we have a variation of the RDL here, Romanian deadlift, the very, very functional, um, a great movement to gain control over um, the a proper hip hinge, uh, especially with a woman who's postpartum, because we can really work on that pelvic floor contraction on the abdominal contraction and kind of ease into this hip hinging pattern, which is so very important um, for, for functioning in daily life, especially caring for a child. Single leg activities are fantastic, whether it be a split squat, a lunge, or a single leg dynamic balancing activity like this. Um, again, all the while we are cueing that pelvic floor contraction. Here we're incorporating the baby into the exercise. So we talked about how, how important this could be. Um, it, it makes it more enjoyable. It, it allows for some mother-baby uh, bonding time. And, um, and it, it takes away the, the barrier to exercise of not having someone to care for the child or watch the baby as, you know, as the, the mother exercises. Um, so you could see the baby was facing outward, now she's facing inward, all depending on the baby's preferences. Sometimes these movements can trigger that startle reflex in the baby, so um, where the arms kind of jut out to the side and her face tightens up and, and she just gets scared. Um, it's okay, just kind of change the position of her um, and uh, see what works best for her. Uh, the other option is you can use something like a baby bajorn, like Carly's showing here. Um, just kind of holds the baby and allows for uh, kind of a hands-free uh, carrying. And here are just some backward lunges, followed by some lateral lunges uh, with and uh, without the baby bajorn. I actually like the step up a lot because negotiating stairs while holding a baby is something that the mother will likely have to do. Um, if she doesn't have stairs in her place of living, she will likely have to do them somewhere in public at some point. So I think it's a great exercise to uh, kind of train that for some functional carryover. Here is a Romanian deadlift with the baby followed by some squatting and lifting, and some squatting and lifting with a twist. I like treadmill walking while holding the baby because walking while carrying the baby is something that the mother will have to do and I think it's important to practice that and train that. Hey, there I am. Sorry, I'm not as easy on the eyes as Carly, but it'll work. So we're talking about here uh, proper ergonomics at home. So the changing table is set to waist height. The diapers and any supplies I need are well within reach right there. Um, so I don't have to be bending, twisting, reaching, and any kind of awkward movements uh, when there's a screaming baby that needs to be changed. Up next, we're going to talk about how to properly use some pillows to um, support the baby, to make it easier to hold her, to rock her, to feed her, uh, especially, especially, especially breastfeeding. <laughs> Um, so you can see the boppy there, that pillow kind of wraps around my midsection. 
It takes a lot of stress off my shoulders and my neck and my back muscles. Pretty effortless to hold her there. Um, and I also recommend switching sides often, right? So I'm looking down and to the right at her. Um, you don't want to always feed on the same side. You want to switch sides to prevent any kind of overuse um, injury. And so now you can see she's on the other side, and I'm looking down now to my left. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Technique Peak. I want to thank my wife, Carly, once again for helping us out. And of course, a big thank you to my daughter, Ava, for making her first appearance on Technique Peak. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Technique Peak. <laughs> Are you the star of the show? What does your shirt say? Oh, I see. Can you say goodbye to everybody?